I sculpted a lot of Mickeys in my life, and this one was for an in-house awards program for Disney employees. So as I recall, we had to make about 25 of these. I had to sculpt it, make the mold, cast all the necessary castings for the addition, and then we had to paint them. This is a pretty complicated piece, and I made a lot of mistakes setting it up and casting it. So let's take a look at everything that I did then compared to how I would do it now and see if there are things that we could improve to make it easier, faster, and more efficient to produce. Anytime you're having problems figuring out how to cast a sculpture, it's probably because it's too complicated. So the key to doing this and how I would do it nowadays is to break it into three pieces. I would take off the hand, make it a separate part, do the body and the arm, and when you take that hand off, this arm becomes just simple tubes. No problem at all to cast, no possibility of catching bubbles, and then I would do the reel, the film reel, as a separate part, which also by itself is much simpler to cast. The body becomes much simpler when you're hanging it in space like this. The feet are flat. I would have two pins, very short pins, coming up out of the feet, as shown here. And the rule of thumb for those is that the depth of a hole, the depth of a pin, cannot be greater than its diameter. So if it's an eighth of an inch diameter part sticking up, it has to be no longer than an eighth of an inch. I find that it's a very good rule. It makes reliable molds. It makes parts that cast well and everything fits. As you can see, the two sprues are running into the pins and there are only three vents in the entire thing. The hand is simple to cast as a separate piece and the hole is perfectly sized to fit over the arm for an easy glue up job. Just overall, it'd be a much easier piece to make. And that's really the key. It's like, if, if, if you're struggling to figure out how to cast something, it's probably too complex. When you cut down the side, you're only going to have to cut down about as far as the ear, as shown here. And everywhere you have a hole or a gap, like between the legs, but under the arm, between the sprue and the body, in all those places, you have to cut through those areas. And you do that by pulling the rubber away from the model. And that lets you get a knife down in there and you can cut between those parts. You have to do that because that's the only way you can free the model from the mold. If you look closely, you see that the sprue is not the same size as the pin because doing it this way tells me exactly where to cut the sprues off. I don't have to guess as to the length. Just that little area tells me exactly how long the pin should be. There is one area that could potentially catch a wicked bubble and that's just right under his lower lip. I don't know, is that his chin? <laughs> I don't know what that is. Anyway, that point sticking out, you can see it, is absolutely where you're going to catch a bubble. Now you don't want a vent running from his lower lip down to the base because then you'd have to cut through it and that means you'd have a wicked parting line right down the middle of his body and that's not what you want. So the best way to do it is to make a little loop vent connecting the underside of that lip to his chest just like this and then it's really easy to trim that off later it's a very minor cleanup job you just have two little connection points to clean up on each casting and you have to remember that that it's there because after you pull the body out from the cavity you've got to free that little vent and to do it you've got to cut through it just like this and that way the entire casting will come clean out of the mold the base itself is a very simple shape to cast and all you need is one good size sprue so it fills rapidly and a single vent at the top. And that sprue is touching the top of the casting because you could catch a bubble above it if you're not careful. One bad mistake that I made when I originally did this job was I left a wicked gap between the film strip and the film canister and you can see it here. And it looks pretty clean here but the problem was when I pulled the original wax model out of the mold that thin groove trapped the rubber mold and it broke off and you can see the broken off rubber stuck in there. So that means that with each casting, what you see here is broken off rubber, but what you see in the casting is resin. So I didn't get anywhere near as clean a line around the film canister as I would have liked. Rookie mistake, I should have filled that in solid and then there would have been absolutely no problem with it. As complicated as this shape looks, the truth of the matter is filling it is no more complicated than pouring water into a glass. It's just a container. The bath of the resin as it flows down is not going to be a straight drop. It's going to fall and it's going to fill into here and it's going to flow down and fill into here and fill into here and all that's kind of hard to simulate with the paper. But the resin is flowing down and as it fills, 
Just watch it fill. Now you see the reason for the vent. Look at that right there. If this vent wasn't there, that would catch a bubble, a really wicked bubble, because it, it would, that little gap, the liquid would trap the air in there. I've been talking about this for four years, and people still ask, where do I put the vents? You put them where the air can get caught at the top of forms. So that's why that vent's there. Keep filling, filling nicely, filling nicely, keeps filling. Now here's another thing. See how this is intersecting with that corner right there? The reason this whole thing is tilted in the mold is so that it fills up. Watch what happens when it fills into here. The resin comes in, hits that corner, and pushes the air out perfectly so that we didn't trap air in this corner, and we're not going to trap it right there either. That angle is, is allowing the air to escape as the resin rises. And again, we trap air right there at the tip of that toe. There's no way around it without that vent. But with the vent, it just rises. So let's look at it again. It just rises and fills perfectly. What would happen if I did it flat like this? So I oriented the piece straight up and down in the mold. Position is so important in the mold. You always want to tilt the thing so that everything's flowing uphill. All the air is flowing uphill. So we keep filling and we keep filling. So far, so good. So far, so good. But look what happens when we get to the bottom of the feet. Look at that. You could trap a bubble anywhere along the bottoms of those feet it very easily because there's nothing pushing. The, it's, it's flat. There's nothing pushing the air out. That's why, again, that's why you tilt it to position it so that you push the air out. So you're going to caught. So we probably just caught a bunch of bubbles in there. This one's okay. And out we go. And same thing right there. You might catch a bubble here. You might catch a bubble here. And away you go. And that is why it is so important to position the thing in space correctly. Hey, if you like this video, watch this video next. If you want to support the channel, there's a link to my Patreon down below. Also down below is a super thanks button. And that's good for if you just want to make a one-time contribution, like you get some value out of a video and you want to throw me a few bones, it's greatly appreciated. And the super thanks button is a great way to do it. Thanks to everybody that is supporting the channel. I will see you in the next video.